you can just click browse and click our directory. So I'll do the, okay, so, so yeah, yeah, just I just change with the prefix like that. Environment I don't think so. Okay. There probably is a way, but I don't think I'm messing around in terminal too much. That's fine. Hello. Yeah, so I th think I had you guys all download the Google Drive folder with all the stuff. It's so all your directories are set up. It's a large folder. It's downloading. Yeah, the problem is there are a lot of files that are pushed up there that are like um, temporary save files that Eagle automatically generates. Uh, I have not gotten rid of it. It's not important. So yeah, I'm on. Uh, if you want to do stuff long term, uh, you want to set up Eagle with Git, which I had my team do. Um, but this is. It's GitHub. Um, this is how we can do version controlling a little bit and how we can prevent people from overwriting other people's work. And so you'll want to like set up a folder eventually to pull from Git and set your directories to that folder uh, and then not touch the Google Drive. I will, I'm the only one that has write access on that Google Drive evil folder. Uh, and so I will pull that folder. Uh, whenever I know there's a clean build currently there. And so that will have always the latest clean build. By build, I just mean like all the files working. All right. All right let's get going. So um, when you open up Eagle, you have this sidebar here. Uh, this is kind of like your control panel. That's what it's called. And uh, this is where you can find all your parts, projects, um, libraries, browse libraries. And so what we're going to do is go to File, New, Schematic. I, this project button looks different, that's why I paused it. Schematic. All right. So uh, yeah, this is the Schematic Editor. Uh, you can see there's a little cross down here. Uh, this is kind of the reference zero zero point, but this doesn't matter too much in the schematic mode. Um, I generally don't stress about it. You can get the thing to display like a more professional CAD drawing type of like outline, uh, but I haven't really done that before. Um, so, top of the menu bar, real quick. Uh, open a file, save, print, cam processor. I'll talk about that probably actually not until the second tutorial. Uh, this is switched to your board mode. Uh, and so you'll have the schematic editor here, and then you'll have the layout editor. Uh, it's the same program, but it's just two sides program. Uh, one out of one, this is for if you want to have multiple sheets. And so you can have, like, uh, you don't, your schematic doesn't have to sprawl out on one page. You can have multiple sheets that have unique topics. Um, this is uh, use a library. Libraries are where you store all the parts. And then these are uh, execute scripts and user language programs, ULPs. These are things that you can do later on to optimize things or organize things or display stuff better. Then these are just some viewing commands, uh, undo, help button, and some other stuff. Next thing, oh, this would save me some space if we did that. All right, this is the grids button. Uh, so currently I have the grids off. I usually leave grids off uh, in schematic mode, um, but it would do that, and you can change the display and whatever. Uh, for schematic, or for the grid, but uh, generally don't use grid in schematic mode. It'll become more applicable during the board layout. Over here, uh, object properties, uh, select viewing an object, your layers, this will once again become more uh, applicable later, and then uh, set the reference point, same thing, that's, that's just this guy. Um, then you have commands, so you have move, copy, rotate, or sorry, uh, mirror, rotate, to select a group. If you want to select a group of objects in Eagle, you have to first click on the operation and then select the group button, then highlight them and right click. Um, it's kind of annoying, but oh well. Um, clipboard, uh, trash, delete or delete a part. This is a button to add a part. So let's click on this. And uh, your directories, you, let me know if you all have the libraries look like this. Do you, do you see any any libraries when you click on add a part button? Okay, uh, so check your uh, current, so 
in order to check your current directories or your current libraries that you've added, you're actually gonna quickly quit out of this and then go to options, directories. And so where is your libraries folder? Okay, when you say a large number of libraries, like talking like 100, because you might have all the default libraries included in there. Yeah, okay. That's Actually, not. It might be in there too. What are, what are the ones I'm looking for? All right, so yeah, what you can do. Underscore DB. Yes, LBR underscore DB. Oh, mine doesn't have underscore DB. In yeah. And you're still getting all the, all the libraries? All right, well, the way around that. Uh, let's go back to new schematic. So you can go to add a library and then just select individual libraries to make sure that you have all the ones we're talking about. We'll just use control board dot lib um, for now. Everything we, we need in this tutorial will be in there. So go ahead and open that directory up and we're going to select um, a resistor. So uh, before I click enter, you can see uh, th this is a custom library, so it's not quite up to par, but you have part name, then on the right side here, you have the schematic view, what the part looks like, and the board view, what the part looks like, as well as a scale. Then there'll be information here. So the package means the size of the part uh, on, on the board. Uh, these packages are pretty standardized across the industry, so that's what that means. Uh, 0805 refers to the dimensions, essentially. So we'll click OK or Enter. Do you guys have a control board? No. Yeah, I don't either. You guys downloaded the Google Drive? Yep. Yeah. Here, I'm going to take a look. <laughs> Yeah, so restart yeah, I'm good. I'm Eagle after you're changing I'm directories. Static, but that's good. But no, I do everything. Okay, I'm good now. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to go slowly while you guys catch up here. So uh, when you first go to place a part... Sorry, why don't you click the control word? Resistor. Okay. So then you have to control this resistor, and you can place as many as you want, um, and you can just click, and you notice... Uh, yeah, and in order to stop clicking, you just click escape twice, and then you're good. I'm going to undo this madness real quick. Uh, I went too far. Okay. So now you have a resistor. Uh, you can rotate it by right-clicking. Uh, and then, so the R1 is the designation designator for that part. Uh, basically keeps track of how many total parts you have uh, for each type. So resistors are R's, capacitors are C's, inductors are L's, uh, integrated circuits are U's, um, and then from there it varies a bit more. Transistors are M's, some of them. Uh, so over here we have two options. Uh, there's name and there's value. So we click on name and click on the part. It pops up says R1, and we're gonna we're gonna leave that, but we'd be able to rename it if we wanted to. And the other option is value. 
So we're going to click on value, then click on the part. And now we can enter in the value for R1. Now, since Eagle does not link a bill of materials to your schematic, um, you can just enter any value here, it doesn't matter. We will actually select that part, individual part number off DigiKey, or wherever you order from later. Um, so for now, we're going to enter 1K. This is a 1,000 ohm resistor. The notation is for resistors, if it's less than 100, you can just say uh, R. Then if it's in thousands, you say K. If it's more than that, you use M. Um, and it's also common notation to say, um, if I have a 4.7K resistor, it's common notation to say 4K7, or you can do 4.7K. Either one's fine. Uh, for consistency, though, we generally just do 4.7K uh, in, in what we do here. So uh, this is to a 1K resistor. And then I'm going to copy this part. I will need, sorry, I'm going to check my design here. We will need uh, four more or three more of those. So I'm going to click the copy button, click on this, and put three more of them down. So to move a group of objects, as I mentioned, um, so you can't just select the move button. What you do uh, is you click move, then you click group button here, and, and then you select all the parts you want to move, right click, and move group. It sounds like a lot, but it goes pretty quick once you get used to it. All right. Now we're going to add a new part. Um, if we go back to add, we're going to add LT6015. This is an op amp, operational amplifier, um, one per package. Hmm? So LT6015? Yes. Oh, is it still downloading? Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Like, you there. downloading? You could download just the control board library. Oh. You don't need to download it all over again. Okay. Oh. You tried. So we're actually going to add two of these op amps. Um, so go ahead and add two of them. Wait, where is it in the control board? No, no, no. You're looking for the control board library. So where is that? What's it's in the, the library LB, LBR underscore DB of the Equisat Eagle avionics section of Google Drive. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm sure. It's good. All right, I'm going to move on but slowly so oh boy. Uh, sorry I'm just gonna the scrolling is really fast here for some reason dumb question I lost my stuff what? Like I zoomed out really far okay yeah how do I fit it to see this button right here yeah. click that there you go if you ever get lost zoom to fit uh, we'll do it so um Uh, we show me again on the Google Drive Yeah, it's. Are you good? Avionics, Equisat, Gold Garden. You know, it's Equisat Eagle. Equisat? Equisat Eagle. Avionics, Equisat Eagle. There's not a folder called Equisat Eagle. You said it's a. BSC, Avionics, Equisat, there is no folder. No, no, no. BSC, Avionics, Equisat Dash Eagle. You see it? It's right. It's not right there. Click the. Uh, no. Right, but that's not true. Click the link he posted. Actually. Oh, why don't you just use Eagle's own library? 
Because we like Eagle does not have all of the parts. There, are, like. No, the, the, then you, you're asking me to select parts of the satellite based on what's in the Eagle library. So the whole point is that you can make your own libraries. Yeah, it's it's in there. It's definitely in there. Okay. Yeah, these guys don't have access. That's so weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Change it to anyone in brown with the link real quick, and then put the link in the Slack or something. Uh, fuck. Anyone with the link in access? Oh, so put the link in the Slack. All right, I already did this, though. No, that's not what I said to do. What the hell? I'm like clicking this and trying to click this link and copy it. Yeah, I know, I know. You don't need to be on it. Yeah. This was that link though, right? Yeah, I cl they clicked that one and didn't work. It said request access. I must have just clicked that button twice. Yeah, it's just, oh, that's my wrong email, yeah. Uh. Oh, were you not in your brown email, maybe? I wasn't in my brown email. Okay. No, you're creating a channel for this. Go to press control K, A, B. You're not sticking around, Don? Uh, no, I'll move it on the uh, It's not that I have it under control. It's, uh, I know that. It's, you're not going to take part? Are you like, would you like me to help you with this? No, no, never mind. Okay. Never mind. It's fine. I wanted to show you Eagle stuff. Yes. You still don't no. have a swipe? Yeah, try like right now. I tried it yesterday, but I can try it now. Try right now. Okay. I'll email him again. It's like full of the controller. No. I mean, Patty probably hasn't cleared it for like 30 years. Yeah, he's definitely All right. I'll try it on this, you guys know. Okay. Are you guys all set? Yeah, okay.
Yeah, I, 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 I saw. I know. We already knew that. We knew that all along. We don't know. That wasn't clear. Sponsor our testing. Uh, all right. I'm going to keep moving forward here. And once again, I'm recording this so you can go back and, and check um, if you missed something. So, all right, we've got these resistors and the op amp. Uh, so we're going to have the top op amp is going to be wired. So these are going to be the same inputs uh, here and here and here and here. So that's Let's label those. So click on this button for electrical connection. We're going to click on this end of the resistor right in the node there and then drag it out a little bit. And you'll notice that it has this kind of like uh, perpendicular thing going on here uh, as they move up and down and it kind of tracks me. By right clicking I can change how this uh, is set up. And so it can be, if you look at the top here it's going through all these. By As I right click it's going through each one. Um, in the schematic editor, we generally keep it to right angles. Uh, that's uh, the more formal way to do it. Uh, in the board layout, it's more mixed uh, and generally preferring 45 degree angles or curves. Uh, and that's because that's actually routing the signal, whereas this is just a schematic line. So uh, just left click to let go, and then uh, press escape to uh, have it cancel. Um, I think you can actually double click too. Double check that. Yeah, double clicking works too. And so they do that for all four resistors about the same length. And you'll notice it kind of locks into certain lengths. Um, so it can keep track of that. So what we're going to do is click, uh, after you have that, we're going to click name. And so not only can you name parts, but you can name uh, uh, nets. Uh, this is called a net, by the way. Any electrical connection is called a net. So we're going to name this net in underscore one. And you notice nothing happened, so what we actually want to do is place a label as well. So this button down here allows you to press a label, and you can click right here uh, twice, and you'll be good. Um, and I'm going to label all the other ones, and so you can see as we name them, their label uh, will change. So the second one we're going to name in underscore two, and then the third one is going to be back to in underscore one. And it's going to pop and say connect net three and in underscore one. And that's fine because we want to do that. And then we're going to do that here as well. All right. Next thing to do is wire oops, the <coughs> resistors uh, into the inputs of the op amp. So in the first one, we're going to wire both inputs into the negative in negative terminal of the op amp. Now the second one we're going to wire in one into in plus and into into in minus. Why do you do it differently? It doesn't matter. Yeah, so I'm oh, just going to add a notation here. So this is going to be a summing op amp yeah, I that. I didn't circuit. That. Okay. And so I'm going to change this to be a info. Don't worry about this now. Um, and then it's going to be a difference. Op amp circuit. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is ground uh, this input. So, your electrical connection, um, whenever you're doing any sort of schematic editing, uh, you always want any 
positive voltage references to go up and any negative voltage references to go down. So if I'm referencing power, those should always be made at the top of my screen and ground should always be made at the bottom of my screen. So uh, I'm not actually sure I'm going to find this, but um, I'm looking for, don't, you don't need to copy this, I'm just seeing if I can find it. Okay, didn't find it. Um, so we're going to uh, ground this signal. So I'm going to name it ground, GND, and then I'm going to attach a label here. Uh, in I need to fix this in our directories, but there's actually a symbol for ground. And whenever you connect that symbol, it will automatically ground. Um, I need to set that up right. Uh, and the so yeah, you just wire over a net, then you name it ground. Oh, just name it. Yeah. Then we're gonna do the same thing for. So any op amp needs a positive and voltage, a positive uh, voltage, and a negative or ground voltage. So in the minus terminal, we're going to also uh, place a ground. So I'm put two more wires. Um, and I'm going to label them separately just to be clear, but you could uh, just connect the signal. So I can do this here and label it, or I could have just taken this connection and wired it straight from here to here, and that would have been the same thing. Uh, but for clarity in the schematic, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to do the same thing down here. So if I want to shorten up this wire, I can just click the move button, and I just move it up a little bit, and so now it's out of the way, and I can move the label up, and that's a little more clean, instead of having it shoot out really far. Real quick, what's the name of that red triangle part? This is an op amp. Uh, oh, LTC6015, it's right there. Okay. The next thing we need to do is we need to label the positive voltages here. So place two wires again. We're going to label these 3V3. That stands for 3.3 volts. Uh, and unlike resistor notation where it's optional to put like 4K7 for 4.7K, um, voltages are almost always done with the letter V in, uh, in the place of the decimal. These labels aren't required, uh, but they are pretty much necessary if you're going to ever try to have someone look at your schematic, or even yourself. Um, so they're, they're pretty much required. Um, all right. Next thing is we need to add uh, three 5K resistors. So we could go back and add another resistor. Um, here and do that process again. Um, we can also copy one of the 1K resistors uh, and then change the value. So we're going to connect uh, up here. We're going to connect from the input to the one side of this resistor, and then from the output to the other side of the resistor. Down here, we're going to connect the positive input to this side of the resistor, and then just leave a little net here, which we're going to label ground then we're going to connect the negative input to the op amp to this side of the resistor and the other side to the output now we're going to label this 
sum out. And by the way, Eagle automatically capitalizes all names. Uh, so you don't, uh, that's the notation. There's no uh, capital or uh, uppercase and lowercase. Everything is uppercase. So I'm going to call it sum out. I'm going to call this diff out. Everyone okay? Questions? Uh, concerns? Comments? Yeah. Uh, how did you create that graph? That, uh, so I just clicked on the net. You, I used the name tool here. Okay. Uh, clicked on the net and then just typed in gra GND. Uh, there is a symbol for ground. It looks like uh, the. Uh, shit. It looks like this. That's a symbol for ground. Um, I'm not going to attach this right now, but uh, in general, this is what you'll be looking for. And then similarly, for a power signal, uh, you'll want to have a, uh, you'll have a port that's just a single red line, a single red bar like that. So actually, I can just, I can just do this real quick. Um, you don't need to copy this, but it's just better notation. Well, that's fine for now. And then if I have these labeled as ground, uh, for ground, if I have that, I don't need to keep the ground label there. But if I do, if I have a power, you should keep um, this. If you have a circuit with multiple different grounds, which doesn't make sense to you possibly right now, um, if you aren't familiar with chassis and digital and analog ground, that sort of thing. Um, but if you just have one ground in your system, it's okay to just omit the label. So, all right, um, now we're gonna add another part. Uh, if you go back to control board, we're gonna add uh, MLX90620. Actually, I need to change that because that's not the name of the part, but uh, it's the name of the part here. And then, yeah, MLX, uh, MXL, yeah. Wait, isn't it? That's supposed to be the IR sensor? Yeah, it should be MLX. I need to fix this package. MLX. Yeah, I know that. And that's not the right. Yes, one. I, I, I tell her I just said that. Oh, right. I'm gonna fix it right now. Uh, you can ignore what I'm doing right now. I'm just. Uh, it's okay for me to do this because I already know that the data sheet permits me to make changes like this. Um. Right, that's fine. So, uh, this is a an IR sensor, and so we're just going to label the nodes here. So this one we're going to call SCL, sensor serial clock. That's for the I two C communication protocol. And this one we're going to name SDA. This is going to be 3v3, uh, and you'd want to check the data sheet to figure out what the VDD of that part is. VDD uh, is essentially just a notation for the input voltage that a part requires. And VSS, uh, in this case, is going to be ground, and that's another notation VSS is. So one of the things about Eagle is that if you name a net the same thing, they are uh, all connected. So there's no uh, repeats. Eagle has a command line interface available to you as well. Uh, so what you can do uh, is type show GND, and it highlights all the signals that are grounded. Or alternatively, I can do show 
3v3, and it'll highlight all the signals that have power. Okay. Last thing we're going to do on the schematic side is add a header, a connector. We're going to grab uh, look at it. the connector is not in the library. We can just grab uh, this Harwin 12. Um, this is something I need to change, but the notation, so the, the naming of our connectors right now is kind of bad. But this is just a 12-pin connector made by Harwin, um, and yeah, it's a through-hole connector. So we're gonna, just going to place that right here. And then, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, let's back up a step. This part in the data sheet says that it requires a bypass capacitor. What that means is we're going to add a part. We're going to add a capacitor. Um, we're going to pick an 0805. So now you see the capacitor has a bunch of options here. These are just the package of the capacitor. Change this, the actual physical size. One of the things you'll want to look into uh, if you're doing more advanced circuit design is the availability of the part in, uh, in the package you want. So, as I mentioned, Eagle doesn't link a, a bill of materials directly to your schematic. This becomes a problem. Uh, for example, if I'm trying to use a capacitor, and capacitors have a voltage rating, it's the maximum voltage you can put across them before they break. The voltage rating, uh, the max voltage rating you can buy for a part changes with the size of the part. So if I need a 120 volt um, capacitor, I'm not going to be able to find that in this package. So I have to know that I need a bigger package for that. So it's also it's very good when you're doing circuit design to check what's available uh, for you to buy uh, before you choose packages. Uh, and with any schematic editor, uh, you kind of have those linked in one part. But let's say I choose an 0805, I place it. Um, I'll explain where I'm why I'm placing it there. But let's say I come back in a week and I say, oh shoot, I need to uh, get a different part for this. What you're going to do is go down here to the replace button, click replace, find the new part you want. Um, if it has the same number of pins and the same schematic view here, there won't be a problem. Otherwise, you might have to move some pins around. Uh, let me just show you. So uh, we're going to connect this end of the capacitor to 3B3, and this end to ground. Which capacitor did you replace it with? I didn't replace it yet. Oh, okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't replace it yet. Um, and we're going to give it 0 0.1 UF, 0 0.1 microfarads. So all right, now we're going to go replace this part. So first, you click on the part that you want to put in. So let's say I want to just select a bigger capacitor. It's like a 1210 package. Then I click on the part that I want to replace. And it doesn't look like it did anything, but it just worked. What did you try to replace it with? Nothing. I just, like, as soon as I click replace, then I click on the capacitor. Do we, what, what part did you select in here? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you have to have. I, I believe you have to have the same number of pins uh, in order to make that, in order to replace a part. So, you replace. Not going to notice a change here, but if I click on properties, uh, sorry, not that. So here's the properties button. Uh, I can see that now it's a 1210, and if I could go back <laughs> and make it an 0805, I can see that now. It's an 0805 capacitor. And notice how the value didn't change, nothing else changed, the designator didn't change, it's just replacing uh, the, basically the, the package uh, and schematic uh, labeling. All right, so that's all set now. So now we're going to go back over to the connector. And because, um, because someone else in some other team told you that this connector needs to have a certain pinout, uh, first we're going to just connections. We need, uh, I believe, nine of the pins. Wait, let me see. We need nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Oh, we only need eight. Oh, well, that's fine. So I'm just going to put a label there. Uh, for time's sake, I'm just going to copy this wire. I'm not copying the net. I'm just copying the physical wire. So one thing you'll notice uh, is I can like move this over accidentally a little bit. Uh, and that's not great because the point of connectivity is actually only right there on the tip of this symbol. Um, this point will not register the connection. Um, so you need to be very deliberate about where you're placing these. Uh, I'm just going to add labels to all of them. Generally, you want all your labels uh, to be aligned if you can. And um, you should label every net that you can. So uh, here's one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect input 2 to pin 1. And it's going to say merge net segment. And I'm going to say yes. And notice how that label changed. I'm going to do the same thing over here with input 1, it's right there, same thing. Next, I'm going to name pin 3 of the head connector, diff underscore out, which is the output from the other thing, and it's going to say merge them or connect them, and you click yes. And so now, uh, just as we did before with the ground and power, this pin right here of this connector is connected to this output of this op amp and the output of this other side of this resistor. Um, as I mentioned, in Eagle, just because it doesn't look connected doesn't mean it's not connected. The easiest way to verify this is use either the show button or just type into the command line show diff out and it will highlight all the symbols. I'm going to name the next net. Oops. Um, okay, they're all selected because they're all the same thing for some reason. Not important. Uh, sum out. Then we're going to do SDA, SCL, ground, and 3B3. And once again, I could have connected this all with wires, or I could have just done this. Uh, when possible, it's best to connect things physically with wires, uh, or with connections on the screen. Uh, it's much more clear to do so, uh, and displays intentions uh, and potential routing problems as well. So I'm just going to also connect these, just so the schematic is more clear. And these are be kind of a pain. I can I can do it. Eh, it's not a big deal. Um, if you get to a scenario where it's very difficult to connect things physically, that's a good time to move to a new sheet. Uh, we're not going to do that right now. But what you do is you click here, click new, brings me over to two over two. It's a blank schematic. I can go back to one over one. But if I add a part here, as just an example, you don't need to do this. If I add a part here, and I name it and I give it a net um, ground. If I click, if I go back over to the first schematic, uh, if I click show ground, they pop up here. But then without changing anything, you can see that. Oh, okay. Well, it's, this is the same. This is the same ground. Um, so there's not an easy way for me to show. I don't remember off the top of my head how to show this to you, but. Um, that is that is the case. So I'm just going to remove this. All right. Uh, I'm going to name this connector. Um, I don't know. Board. Yeah, actually, just connector is a fine name. So the reason for the name is that there are a lot of preset uh, kind of fill-ins for what will end up in the silk screen of the PCB when we get there. And so you might have noticed uh, when I, I'll show you real quick, um, but don't worry about this for now. When I go over here, oops, 
so this is the device view in the library, and I'll be doing more stuff in the library in the second tutorial. But you can see here, this is the schematic view that we see. Then when we go over to the board, we're going to have this view. And this view, uh, in this view, these names and values are all things that will be printed on the PCB and the silk screen. So when I select the name of this device, I'm actually selecting what will appear on the silk screen of the PCB. Now, this makes it much more convenient to link parts around and figure out what's going on um, than putting text boxes everywhere, essentially. All right, and I'm going to name uh, this component IR. I'm going to name this, um, actually, U1 is fine, and U2 is fine. All right. So now we're also at the schematic. Uh, we should have saved a while ago, uh, but I just saved now. You should have we should have all saved like thirty five minutes ago. Uh, Eagle might auto save. I think it depends on your settings. It definitely does if you have named it. I think you're right. Quick save the first time. Yeah. So, alright. Now we're ready to go into board mode. So, uh, before we do that, yeah, any questions? Everyone caught up? Need me to slow down, speed up your board? I missed the how did you name the summing like, off names? Oh, uh, yeah, so I clicked on text box here. Okay. And I just entered the text I wanted. And then. Uh, I changed it over to info. The, so this is the layer info. Um, and so on schematic view, it doesn't really do much, but now I do that, and I can place as many as I want, and press escape, uh, and double escape. I can delete those. All right, another feature of Eagle is that it allows you to swap between things that are closely located uh, when you're trying to select an object. So as I'm trying to select um, SDA, so I click right there, I'm pretty close, but it selects the wire instead. If I right click, it'll swap between the next thing nearby. So I can right click back and forth and allow me to select different things. And now I can move this around, whereas before, um, I ended up moving this around. One of the things that's good to do, oh, so then other, other things you can do in schematic mode, uh, things that we need to start working on more, uh, are like notating things. So um, we could label this as like uh, just with a kind of a box like this. And what this signifies is that these things should be like co located. Um, so, when we get into the schematic or the board layout, the board layout doesn't uh, force us to put anything anywhere. We can have full control, and that's not always a good thing. Sometimes placing things near each other in a schematic means they should be near each other um, in real life. For example, this bypass capacitor should be as close as possible to this component. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say place C1 um, next uh, as as possible to IR. How did you make the little dotted line box? Oh, I clicked on, sorry, I clicked on draw lines and then I clicked on short dash. And you can change things like the width and radius and whatever. Wire? No, uh, lines. Oh, yeah, sorry, wire. Yeah. I'm looking at, it, yeah, same, same thing. Um, what's this too? Um, but yeah, that's not too important right now. I have not yet formalized how I want things like this to be notated on our schematics. Um, so yeah. And then you can, you can add more text uh, as appropriate. Let's say we knew this was going to be a, a really high current connection. We could say something like... Um, sorry, I wanted to go... I'm not even sure what to say. Oh, sorry, I want to do this. 
two amps. And just place it right there. Um, I don't know if that's good, but there are things like that that you might want to do in the schematic mode. All right. So we're all set here. What we're going to do to start board layout is click on this button here, generate slash switch to board. The first time you click this with a schematic, oh, you have to be saved before you can do this. Uh, yeah, the first time you do this with a schematic, it will generate it. From then on, it will just switch back and forth. Uh, so click on that. It says it does not exist. Create schematic. If this pops up and you already created the board, click no. Uh, but we have not created the board yet, so we're going to click yes. And it will pop up with this little thing right here. Which I'm going to... Okay. Um, oh. Forgot about this feature. I can do this now. All right. Cool. Uh, split screen is definitely very useful for doing this type of thing. Uh, for as I mentioned, when you have like parts that are related, uh, looking at the schematic as you're laying out the board is very useful. But all right, I'm gonna focus on the board mode real quick. So. This white line is the outline of our board. Um, if we click right here, we can see the properties. Uh, it's just a bunch of wires um, in the dimension layer. And you can see the locations there. So these numbers are in inches. And I can tell that because it says inches in my grid. Um, the fundamental problem of doing board layout is that I think most people like to operate in millimeters as much as possible. But the notation for the widths of any signal you route is generally in mils. A mil is a thousandth of an inch. Uh, so a thousand mils, one inch, hundred mils, tenth of an inch. This is just the notation, but all PCB stuff is generally referenced to mils. So uh, what we're going to do is go to millimeter mode, and I keep in millimeter mode whenever I'm placing parts changing the board shape, anything like that. Then when I start actually routing signals, I switch to um, mill mode, so in millimeter mode. I'm going to select 0 0.1 mils here, and then my alt is going to be 0 0.05, sorry, 0 0.01. So I'm going to turn this on. So what this does is it creates a grid. Uh, it's going to display a grid with 0 0.1 millimeter increments. And then if I click alt, so that will also select where my well, the grid that my objects lock onto. If I'm moving the object around, if you hold on the Alt key while you're doing that, this Alt grid is the, and then the grid that it will lock around to. So it's convenient for setting up kind of two simultaneous grids um, for locking parts in place. All right, so we're going to right click on the properties of this right side of the board, and we're going to bring this down to be a uh, 10 centimeter, uh, sorry, one centimeter by one centimeter board. Uh, I lied about that, just kidding. Sorry. We'll do, we'll, do, uh, we'll do 10 centimeters by half a centimeter. It's probably still overkill, but that's fine. Actually, no. Well, okay, we'll, we'll stick with this for now. Uh, in general, you'll want to make the board as small as you can if you're like doing regular circuit design. As small as you can with like still full functionality. Uh, it's cheaper that way and just basically a better use of your space. But for us, uh, in a project like this, you know, you have requirements uh, that manufacturers will tell us about how big the board has to be, where there have to be hole, drill holes and whatnot. So, first thing we're going to do. Uh, is place the components. So you see here these yellow lines connecting all the parts? These show connections. They're not signals routed, they just show you what needs to be connected where. And they're also, they're based on current shortest path. So right now it's showing me that the ground on the IR sensor should be connected to the ground on the op amp. Well, that's not wrong. We're not gonna, we're not gonna lay it out like that. Um, that wouldn't make any sense to lay it out like that. So I'm going to place this right there. And then 
So watch, uh, then I'm gonna place the connector right there. And I'm just kind of approximating stuff. Uh, in, the, in actuality, you can go in and right click properties and set the exact coordinates um, of where this is. And this matters more when you're doing, once again, like real projects. Um, but the exact placement does not matter other than external constraints for the most part. Um, we'll get to see in a little bit why that's not quite always the case. Uh, next thing I'm going to do real quick is fix this because it's been bugging me. And actually, this is the reason why the um, processor test boards weren't working for a little bit. Uh, this is the silk screen on the component. And as you can see here, Uh, it was only in part of it. So what happened was um, it was unclear when you have the pads. If you just have silver pads and two lines, it was kind of unclear where the resistors go. And so now this square kind of defines the resistor. Um, if I want, I can actually expand this a little tiny bit. Oh, this has tabs now. Oh, this is fancy. In a bad shape. Yes. You can make a board any shape you want. Uh, generally, people will charge you more for not rectangular boards. Uh, I'm going to update. I'll, I'll push this all, but I'm just going to update the library. And so you can see, whenever you do that, it'll give you a warning you modify the board, but you can see now that it's all OK. All right. Uh, you'll also notice, if you uh, care real quick, that that changed both the capacitors and the resistors. So these resistors and capacitors are the same exact package, which means in my library, when I change uh, package for the part, it changes it for both of them. Um, when we get into that next time, uh, you'll s learn how to do that and why that's a good thing sometimes and why it's not. So next, we will place op amps. Oh, so I'm going to move stuff around pretty randomly right now, uh, and I want to show you so I'm just going to move this over here like that. Um, and so it looks really jumbled right now. But what I'm going to do is click this button right here. This is the rat's, oops. This is the rat's nest button. It'll calculate the shortest airways. I click on that, and now it recalculates those lines to be routed to the closest net. So what it does is it, uh, when you press that button, it finds which other pad uh, the pads being either these green things or the red things is closest that's connected to that and then it will track that around as you move it but if you move it somewhere else where there's a closer one it will then recalculate and press the button uh, another button is smash what this is is a way to clean up your names here so I click smash on the IR sensor and now you notice little uh, pointers popped up for those so now I can move these over uh, and place them slightly better for example, maybe like that. And I, when I click this, they still follow it, but they're also independently controlled. All right, so you can move around a part right by right-clicking, same as the schematic editor. And it looks like, looks like the fucked up. I fucked up. So one of the things you can do in the schematic to make sure you're doing everything right is to click on a connector or click on a part and drag it around. And notice how only that one wire is still connected. That means that uh, I've messed up when I try to connect the other wires. So I'm going to go back and try it again. And so now it's, there we go, now they're all connected. Does everyone see how that works? This is a good way to, like every time you make a board, you should always do this. Uh, for all of your components, make sure you didn't leave anything connected, or leave anything unconnected. And if you go back to the board layout, you can see that instantly that was updated, and all those pins are correct now. All right, so what we're gonna do 
is essentially you're going to try to manually optimize where things go. So I'm actually going to ignore power and ground real quick and try to just organize this for the other signals. So that looks like it'll make sense there. That maybe will make sense there. This definitely makes sense um, if I put it up here. So let's maybe move these over to the side. If that wants to be, so I'm not gonna put this maybe. Let's see, I'll put it uh, here. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. I'll explain why. Uh, and then I see this. Actually, I'll come back to that. So. I'm not really sure what R6 is and where I should place it. So I can go over here and see R6 connects for U2, it connects that net to ground. So okay, I'll place this, I'll place that there. But I'm not really sure about this, so I'm going to click rat's nest and I'll see, okay, yeah, it's also connected to that one. And let's see, I'm not going to worry about ground right now, and I'll mention that in a minute, why. Then I'm going to go over here, do the same thing with this connector. So or with this, uh, sorry, op-amp circuit. So there's the sum out. Um, let's see, let's put this over here. Got this capacitor, which needs to go. So notice how this capacitor currently says it should be go right to these pins. But remember in the schematic, we noted that place C1 as close as possible to IR. So we're actually going to place this over here. And I click Rats Nest now. You can see that it updated. And I can move it around. So it says oriented, ideally. You want to minimize things crossing over, essentially. So I'm going to finish kind of doing this arbitrarily. And you guys can do it a little differently than me um, if you think you found something better. One thing about doing board placement is that you can't, it's like not a solvable problem. Um, you can kind of arrange things, however, and there'll always be a worse and better solution. Um, I don't, this connector text is bothering me, so I'm going to smash this part and move this over here. Like that. All right, that's probably fine. A lot of the time, circuits will give you, like a data sheet for a part, will tell you how to lay out the circuit around it. Um, if you find something like that, absolutely abide by what it says as best you can. Uh, and ask questions, and but use your best judgment. But um, there are various things like noise and high frequency signals. Uh, like some things you need to take into account are noise, high frequency signals, uh, the impedance of the wires, and a lot of data sheets kind of have that figured out for you. So, all right, this looks pretty decent. Um, and I left some space here on purpose. I could have made this a lot closer, but I wanted to uh, leave kind of room for tooling, moving my hands around here without having to touch parts. So keep in mind that when you build this, your hands are going to be interacting with this connector, and you don't want to accidentally touch any of these components for a whole number of reasons. Um, one thing, another thing you can do, so a PCB can have multiple layers. So if I click on the mirror button and then click on this capacitor, it just turned blue. This means now it's on the bottom layer and I can confirm that by right clicking and you'll see, uh, sorry, if you click on the pad, well, oh, sorry. 
Another way to do it, well, all right, I'll hold on a second. Um, so yeah, there's a two-layers PCB, and they don't, uh, they interact as much as you tell them to. So I can place this capacitor directly here, and there's no problem whatsoever. And that same thing with right-clicking applies here. So if I have these components top of each other, and I click on one, let's say I actually want to click on the op-amp, I would right-click, and now I have control of that. So yeah, the layers are independent. There's no problem placing this in any of these locations because these are surface mount components. They only attach on the top surface. On the other hand, I cannot place this here. These green things are called vias, and they signify a through-hole component. This means that there'll be a hole in the board that goes on both layers, uh, goes to the entire board, not just both, if you have more than two layers, go through all those two. And so you can't place things there. But I know that I'm placing this part on top of the board. And so I know that I can place this capacitor right here. I'm going to place it. Uh, I'll place it like that. And once again, like this won't be conflicting. These C1.1 microfarads won't be conflicting with any of this stuff at the top. And I can confirm that by using the layer tool. So when I click on layers, that layer button's right there. This display pops up. And these are all the layers of things that are happening here. It's just like Photoshop, where you have all these layers of things that are on top of each other, and you can turn them on and off. So if I want to turn off the top, I click. I just unclick that. I'll click Apply. And you can see that all of the pads down here just went away um, because, I turn, because I turned them off. So if you want to confirm that this text MLX 90620 won't be conflicting. I just can click off, turn off T place, or sorry, just T names. If I did this correctly, and that, okay. Oh. Okay, I, I messed up. I, this part is one of the ones I made when I was like learning Eagle, so I messed this up. I haven't fixed it since then, apparently. But you can see the other one, other ones went away. That's in principle, which, yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, so similarly, I can just get rid of the bottom. So I get to the bottom pads. If I want to get rid of the bottom layer entirely, um, you can go through and click all of these. Something I want to make in the future uh, are either shortcuts you can make to just like select all top or select all bottom or various things like that. There's also an all button and none and stuff like that. Uh, there are a lot of layers. Uh, most of them you won't ever use. It's really the most layers Com right layers most commonly used are these top 50 or so. Alright. So this looks pretty good. Next thing to do is double check my board size. So clearly I did not need this much space. I'm going to select all the components and move them. And it's going to try to move the board with me, but that's okay. Uh, I'm actually going to redo this and just select the components. I forgot to right click. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> Alright, we're good. Just clicking the schematic. So now I can just move this in as I feel like it. I don't really care about the size too much. But I do want to make sure that that line is kind of parallel, so it's actually a rectangle, not like a trapezoid of some sort. And if you're not sure if you fucked it up, uh, you can just right click on the wire. I'm just going to change these to convenient numbers, 40, 18, 0, 18. Can you move a name closer to the part? Uh, did you smash it? No. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so if you click smash on uh, any part. Yeah, so actually I'm gonna go down here now. So you can see we have like overlapping stuff here. That's not very good. So I'm gonna smash uh, there's actually a user language program that you can run. Um, that smashes all. Oh that's not ah, never mind, it's only a schematic. Alright, ignore that. All right, so I'm just going to go and smash a bunch of these to relocate their names. This is important for those of you who've done P 
needs to be soldering because you know that you really convenient to want to be able to read these. Oh, I did notice before. That's right. Let me uh, also change the package. Um, so these silk screens were too small. Uh, this, uh, sorry, it's not in this mode. Hold, give me a second here. So I'm going to place this here and this here. The idea is uh, to keep everything aligned in the same fashion for a given board. So what I mean by that is if I have a part that's uh, a rectangle, not a square, I want to keep its designators kind of all lined up with it. So I could either do like this, um, or I could place them all like this. You just want to be consistent. Uh, I actually prefer to do it like this. Well, actually, I'm going to come back because I think these are going to get resized. Anyway, um, if you're not sure which one's linked to where, you'll notice there's a little white line that connects the right component to the right location. through for all the components to make sure these are somewhat neat. So here I'm running out of board space and there's not really a place to put it here. So here uh, I'm just going to put them side by side. They're on top and bottom probably. Oops. Alright, that's pretty good. Uh, one of the things I'm thinking about doing is actually getting rid of these numbers on the board. So to save space, you only have one designator per object, so you'd have to reference the bill of materials in order to figure out what value to put there. Um, I don't want to just put the value because there are other properties associated with any given designator than just a value. For example, uh, resistors have tolerance, and so they're manufactured to a certain degree of uh, accuracy, and sometimes you want a uh, high tolerance part. Other times, if you want to save money, you use a lower tolerance part, and you don't want to confuse them if you can avoid it. All right. So now, last thing to do before we start routing is place our polygon planes. So for po things like power and ground that are ubiquitous and uh, going to be carrying more current than other signals, uh, and you don't want to disturb too much, you create what's called a polygon plane. What this does essentially fills the entire board uh, in places that you're not currently routing a signal. It'll fill everything else with copper. That's that signal. Um, so I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm clicking the poly polygon button, top layer. Then I'm going to draw, going to draw a box around it. See it? Going to finish off the box. And then I have this thing here. I'm going to click on name, and I'm going to name it 3v3 and I click rat's nest and you can see it kind of filled in everything and if you look in on certain signals, so this signal is 3v3 and you can see how uh, it's automatically been connected already and same thing over here this has been connected and then the power lines of all the other parts have also automatically been connected and it automatically knows to create space around the other parts um, we're going to do the same thing for the bottom layer, and then we're going to call that one ground. Now the problem is there are obviously a lot of ground signals on top, and power there's one power signal on the bottom. So the power signal on the bottom I'm going to ignore for now, uh, but for ground signals on top, so this pad here is on the top layer, but ground pads in the bottom. This is totally okay. I'm going to place a via. So 
I'm actually going to switch back to uh, mills now. So I want this drill to be uh, 20 mils diameter auto. I'm going to place this under this part. And that's acceptable because I know that the part, that I'm allowed to do that for this part. You'll have to check for every part. I'm, place it, I'm going to place it as close as I can to this ground thing. And then I'm going to go over and name this via ground. And it automatically will now connect it there. Um, I'm going to name this one ground. And actually, I noticed there's one more on top. I'm going to put this right here and name this ground. Now, this via will is exposed copper in this green area, so I need to move these over or else I won't be able to see them. And to be clear, I'm actually going to move them over here and move this designator closer to the part. Okay. Press RAS nest again, and it will show you the closer connections. All right. So, Eagle does have an auto router, uh, and don't do this. But I'm just going to click on the auto router button, click continue, start, and it's done. This is a pretty simple board, and we laid it out pretty well. So. We could be all done right now if we wanted to be. Um, okay, you couldn't get that one signal. So sometimes what's good to do is run the auto router and then see what it can't do. Oh, so the problem here was we had that polygon plane, remember? But it ended up separating this part of the plane from the rest of the plane. So it still needs that signal still needs to be connected. Uh, that's not too big of a problem. Uh, but I don't like how Eagle did this, actually. It was kind of stupid to put this line right here. They should have put it underneath to maintain that plane. So I'm just going to undo the auto router, and we're back to normal. Another thing that's good to do uh, if, you're, if you're a bigger board is auto route, um, or manually route important signals first. So route power, ground, um, high frequency signals, other uh, things that might be more important to you, and then auto route all the other stuff. But what we're going to do now, because we have only a few things, um, yeah. There's yeah. Much here. We are going to start routing. So we're gonna start over here. So to, in order to route, you're going to click on this button here, route manually. Then a bunch of things are gonna pop up. So this width is in mils. And this is the layer we're going to be routing on. In order to start routing, I click on a pad of some sort. And you can see it kind of follows me around. Um, and then I can right click to change the mode. So I'm just going to connect this here. And I bring this over here, it kind of locks in. I left click, and I'm done. And I click Rat's Nest. And you can see how uh, that route is now its own thing. Now this 3v3 pad is still okay because it has connection coming in here, and that's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. If I want to make that better, what I would do uh, is take this in the top plane to maybe right here. Then I would go over and switch to the bottom plane and finish the connection. Because this is a through-hole connector, I can connect this on either side, but for this part, it's only a surface mount, so I can only connect to it on the top side. So this automatically created a via, and if I left click, you can see now there's 3v3 flowing through here, um, and there's a and that signal carries on on the bottom side of the board. There is a slight penalty to having vias everywhere. Um, if you have too many of them, they're harder to manufacture, uh, but they also do break up top planes. Um, they take up more space than just normal signal, and they do... Uh, have slightly less optimal characteristics for like conductivity. Um, gonna go through here and route a few others of these. I'm gonna do the same thing here actually. I'm gonna bring this over here, route to the bottom. Mm, I'm okay with this being that close. So this is actually a little bit close, but because I know these two are connected, I'm not really concerned. 
Actually, alternatively, what I'm going to do is change my uh, pad pattern to be this circle. So uh, it's kind of just the convention that I've chosen, but you can change the um, the shape of the pad depending on what it is, if it's just a via or if it's an intentional, uh, if it's a via that you place during routing or if it's an intentional via, um, just makes it a little more clear to the person soldering the board. So I'm going to continue on routing some signals here, doing that, give this a shot. I'll connect all these grounds to their vias that are nearby. So I need to connect this through here, and so I can actually put this here, route it in this slot here, and then up to power, or up there, or sorry, up to the other side, and then I'll connect this here. Um, I'm not worried about this route that's under all these nets, because this is not an exposed wire. There's going to be a solder mask above it. I know this from experience. but. Um, if you are unclear, you can go over to layers, um, and you'll see T-stop and B-stop. So anywhere where there's a, that grid pattern and T-stop means that there'll be exposed copper and the silk screen will not be available to you. The silk screen will not be visible. So this is a good way to check that you're not uh, overwriting or that uh, your, your silk screen will be kind of affected. But it, it gets in the way, so I turn it off often. All right, so this looks fine, and then I'm gonna gonna come over here. So I actually made a right angle there. I don't like that. Um, I want to try to avoid those. And another thing to avoid is when you have a pad, you generally don't want to connect and do it from the side. Uh, when you do that, so. If you, if we'll zoom in on this actually, and take this as an uh, example case. Um, I'm gonna move this over a bit too. So if I show the solder mask, so there's actually gonna be a bit of just the raw PCB, no copper, no silk screen, no solder mask right here. And so if I connected a signal in from the side, there actually would be a small copper piece. Uh, there would be a little bit of copper right there. And when you go to solder, this is going to attract some solder and kind of move your component on top of the pad, which makes it a little harder to solder. So when you can, have signals um, only come into a device uh, in line with the pad. to do here. Alright, so connect this to the bottom. It's like kinda like problem solving, I guess. I'm doing half on the top and half on the bottom here, um, so I don't break up either the ground plane or the power plane too much. Oh boy. Right. This is the last one. So I'm just kind of kind of curious about how well I've been doing with breaking up these planes. So I'm going to do show 3v3, and that looks pretty good. Uh, there's pretty good connections all throughout there. If I show ground, that's also not bad, but it looks like I have no problem routing through here on the ground plane. That doesn't look like it'll be a problem to me. Um, the problem will arise and I have to get the ground signal through here, so I'll show you that in a minute. Alright, so start on the top here. 
I'm going to switch to the bottom. And then I'm actually going to meander my way back on the bottom plane over to here. And I'm just a little unsure about how sketchy or not sketchy that was, so I'm going to turn off the top components. Yep, and that looks fine. And if I show ground, there's still a pretty good connection all around. So. All right, that's all set. And then we'll go over here and route these signals, which are fine. So this component has a drill hole in the component, so we can't route through here. We have to go around. Um, Unfortunately, Eagle does not automatically figure that out for you. Other some other programs do, and will uh, like kind of not let you place a, a wire there. But Eagle is not that nice. That's a little close, but we'll get told in a minute here if that's too close. So last one's here. Uh, I can just connect in the bottom plane. There to there, and we're done. Last thing we're going to do is enter text and say tutorial board v1. And I'm going to go to uh, document, I'm gonna bring the size down to 50. Not really sure where I'm going to place this, but let's place it there. Um, and then maybe some other labels if I want. But yeah, basically we're done. Um, you go back through and you check everything again, make sure you don't have any empty connections. Um, but that's all that. So that's the uh, pretty much the end of this tutorial. Um, simple board. Next time we'll be going into more advanced board layouts. Um, some more things that are like, taken into consideration when you're doing stuff, uh, library management and making like how to make a part. Um, and yeah, we can all, we'll also go, I'll go through how to take this board and now get this manufactured. So any questions? Did everyone kind of give up trying to keep up with me at a certain point? Yeah, so I made this an hour tutorial last time and I didn't get through it at all. And so I made this an hour and a half and then I still didn't get through it all in an hour and a half. What? Your brain just goes faster than Yeah, I mean also I've been, you know, I've, I've been doing this, I've probably spent over like a thousand hours of my life doing board layout of various sorts. So maybe not a thousand, maybe 500. Um, so there's a lot of things that I know that I forget are not as obvious. Um, Initially, yeah, it took me. A, it's definitely there's a steep, a decent learning curve. Uh, but Eagle is one of the easier software pieces to use. Uh, so after you, well, after a few sessions, you should be able to get the hang of it. Did you learn it just through round space? Yeah. Oh, okay. I well, I kind of self-taught myself um, for the purpose of skip set. All right. Any last questions? I'm just going to stop recording now. Um.